Okay, welcome back to my show, Second City Radio, Mike Holloway's Digital World, and it's been out on social media. This guy, over 40 films and counting in his career, musicals as well, um, and a lot of TV, things like Arthur of the Britons, Luke's Kingdom, um, the big film The Stud with Joan Collins, Arabian Adventure, Holby City, Dad's Army the Movie. I mean, the list is endless. I'm thrilled, honestly, beyond words, to welcome into the show Oliver Tobias. Welcome. How are you? I'm good, thank you very much. Not bad at all. <laughs> I'm all right. I mean, we're all doing... Still breathing, still living. Yeah, yeah well, you know, it, we won't go too much on uh, what's going on. We all know this COVID world that we're living in is doing all sorts of um, things to our minds and mental awareness. But, um, you know, um, it's... I can't tell you. It's so lovely to speak with you. We'll go through our journey together in the interview. But how did you get... I mean, born in Switzerland... What drew you to show business, Oliver? How did it draw you in? Well, it, initially, I was, I was born in Switzerland into a theatrical family. Both my mother was a classical German actress. She was born originally in Berlin and then shifted to Switzerland in the 1930s. And my dad, Swiss, born in Vienna, but then moved to Switzerland again in the 20s during the... the, um, the, the it's a big story, really. And they, anyway, they ended up in Switzerland. I was born in Zurich. They were working in the Zurich time. My mother was. That's where she would met my dad. He then got involved with the theatre as well. And then they had a theatre company after the war, which toured Germany, all the German-speaking lands. They were Anglophiles and uh, vehement anti, anti-Nazis and everything. Yeah. We were born, my older brother and I were born shortly after the war. I was born in 47 in Zurich in Switzerland. And then uh, came to times my parents were often away from home. They thought they missed a boarding school. And so they, because they were Anglophiles and had friends in England, I decided to send us to boarding school in England. So I ended up in a boarding school in England in the late 50s. As a, as a 10, 10 year old, I kind of left home already that time to go to boarding school. Wow. And then uh, it went on like that. Uh, end of school came, 15, 16. We had a band at school called the Hellions. And um, and then uh, then I joined a, a rock and blues band and played with champion Jack Dupree in Zurich in the Africana. And then I was a professional musician for a year and then went to drama school. And I went to drama school at 15 in the East End, which was a Joan Littlewoods Theatre Workshop of Spring School. And I went there for three years, then I left early uh, in a panic. I was going to get a job. Then I auditioned for hair and got the lead in hair in 68. Amazing. Uh, what, I mean, again, you know, you've That's tried... in short, that's a short story. <laughs> yeah, of course, because, and that's great, because that gives us a bird's eye view of the, uh, your, your training and all the effort that you've put in. But obviously, you know, absolutely stunning looking man with the charisma that you had on the screen was picked up ever so quickly because you've done so many films and quite rightly so. And of course, you know, the big one that um, gave you a lot of exposure was obviously the, 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 the stunt with Joan Collins. How did that come about? Um, they, I was in, in, in London. I, I was doing that in 1978, wasn't it? Yes. So I, I've been doing knocking around in the, in, in the 70s. I did Arthur of the Britons beginning of the 70s. Then I went to, uh, uh, yeah, then it was Luke's Kingdom. Well, no, that was early 80s after the stunt. So it's just one of those things, you know, they said um, they're still looking for a lead in that part, for that part. So I went to meet Jackie Collins and she said, have you read my books? I said, no, I've never read your books. But anyhow, I was hired to play the part. I met a very very good director, Quentin Masters, and then sat together, the actors sat together and and, uh, re-scripted it, re-scripted the dialogue for the film because... He wasn't particularly happy with uh, what it was. And then it was shot and it was very successful, you know. Brilliant, absolutely. It became a, a big, big hit in no time. And uh, funnily enough, they're going to re it, I think, this year. Uh, and, um, yeah, we you... that thing was shot and finished in three weeks. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> just amazing. <laughs> um, and obviously, um, starting in musicals with hair, launching into films, obviously not too far after that, we had an amazing journey because, of course, the Pirates of Penzance, the blockbuster sort of, you know, Hollywood version, was at the Drury Lane Theatre Royal, and you, fantastically, were cast as the um, replacement for Tim Curry as the Pirate King, of course. Um, and that was 82-ish, 1982. And um, you, were, you were brilliant. And uh, Peter Noon was the Frederick at the time, but he had an accident. And I was called up to uh, take over the role of Frederick for the last three months of the run at the Drury Lane. And I'm telling the listeners, because you were, I was only 22, and um, it was not, you know, uh, my second sort of theatre experience. You were amazing. Brilliant, a mentor. Oh, kind of interface. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. At times were, that was a high pressure kind of show, you know, big theatre, 1,800 people. That's it. And full up practically every night, you know, so you, you were really on when you, and um, that was, you did extremely well. There's a lot of pressure there to jump in on these big parts and and do the thing. And, and the commercial pressure of being, uh, where they hope to, sell every seat in the house and uh, yeah we, we we felt good but I mean, the eight shows a week and of course back then there was no such thing as um, click tracks and trickery it was all uh, stand uh, up and deliver <laughs> yeah stand and deliver mate. eight <laughs> times a week two, over two two and a half hours each Abs- yeah, it was a great experience really um, all round yeah it was a hell of a thing and a hell of a thing for you you did extremely well yeah yeah no, we really- loved Everyone. I'll always remember you uh, um, and also Ronald Fraser and George Cole yeah. um, because, you know, I asked the questions and I watched you all working and uh, to this day in theatre I still use, you know, things that I was taught from you guys to this day, Oliver. Oh, great. Yeah, good. Yeah, must work then. Must be, must be all right then. Absolutely. It's all picked but- up. But you, I mean, things like Hobby City are, are, are on the television. But hey, let's come back to films. What have you got in the pipe? You, you've always got something brewing. I know we're in lockdown, but you know, what's Oliver's next project then on the big screen or on film kind of subjects? What's going on? Right now, absolutely nothing. Right. Um, I'll tell you what's happened in my life, really. I, I married a lovely girl, had two, two more children, two sons. Yeah. And I've been, uh, been, been with them and I, led, I made sure that that's the most important thing in my life because I have been working since, yeah, you say about 18. It's a long time. Like to be an actor, even if you're at the top of your game, you've got to really be going to, to, to make enough money to afford to have children to keep home and a family. Yeah. And I... I managed by hook and by crook doing that, accepting all sorts of jobs, some which I didn't like, but I did them anyway. And uh, yeah, and over the years, you know, that's 40, 40, 40 plus. Yeah. 23 now, and I thought, no, I've had enough. And I don't want to be going into anyone's office where somebody sits there, uh, with, well, Mr. Tobias, we'd like you to consider this part. Then you go and see them and they say, we don't think you're quite right for this. I'm like to say you can then, you know, yeah. take a running job. Politely take a run, yeah. <laughs> you judging me, you know, get lost. I don't want to do it. No. I don't want to be judged like that any longer. <clears throat> Fair I'm, enough. Do you know what I mean? Uh, give me the job or leave me alone. Yeah. Got, mm. As an actor, you've got to pack your bags, you've got to leave home, you've got to be there. It's, um, because you have to love your profession and you have to be adaptable. And also, physically, you've got to go there and work. If you're yes. on a film, you're in a hotel, you're alone. Yeah. You're away from your family. So I spent so many years in that. Lost my first marriage because of it, but I just don't want to do that anymore. And I've, I've retired. That's what I've done. Brilliant. And I'm really enjoying life and looking after the kids, the family, my other children. So that's what I do at home, and I enjoy it. And and that's about as far as and if somebody really wants something going 
if they offer it to me on a plate, fine, but otherwise I'm out of it. But what I do, but what I do, friend. yeah, but what I do want to tell you is that it, it, putting it out as, as a feeler that, um, you know, I'm interviewing you for my radio show, you've given so many people so many great memories and great pleasure in all the brilliant work that you've done, Oliver, that's for sure. It's not forgotten, not by a long, long way. Well, it's very nice to hear, yeah. That's very nice to hear. Very, very wonderful comments. Um, but for this um, uh, interview, and we can always get you back on the show if anything pings in, you just ping me and Definitely. we can, you know, get you back on the show. But for now, I always hand over you so that you can say goodbye. I call them my listeners, my digital warriors. So I'll hand over to you so you can say goodbye to them in your own wonderful way, Oliver. Over to you. Okay, um, the listeners, I'm really, really happy that you're supporting Mike because he is a great fella and a very genuine person in a very crazy entertainment world. So they are rare, and so please go on listening to his show. Oh. And he's a really good mucker and a good mate. So goodbye, and lovely to talk to you. Bye-bye. <laughs>